Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, woke up this morning over here at the rest area that we stopped at last night. Slept in till about 11.30. Didn't get to bed to about 4.30 after uh, editing the video and getting it to upload. But when I woke up at 11.30 this morning, it was still only 85% uploaded. So I just kind of laid there for a little while trying to give us some time to finish up. Unfortunately, now it's almost 12.30 and it's still not fully uploaded. It's only gone up 1%, so the service here is just terrible. So we may just have to hit the road and hope that it continues to upload and doesn't just completely stop, which happens sometimes. And that's why you don't always get your videos on time because we don't always have service. All right, guys, it is about quarter after one now and the video finally uploaded. So hopefully I'll get that to go uh, visible for you guys this evening. But while I was sitting here, I got to playing with CB radio. Yeah, I've been running Goliath for five years without a CB radio in it. And that's because the interior is trash. Look, I've got no headliner, no nothing. So the whole idea was I wanted to put an interior in it first and then put the CB, the stereo, so on and so forth. And uh, well, that just hasn't happened as fast as I thought. Now, Katie bought me this CB radio for either Christmas or Father's Day a couple years ago. I don't remember. And uh, it just got kind of thrown in my closet. So I got to look and decide on how I want to mount it because I've made the decision that interior or no interior, we're putting it in. I can always take it back out and uh, put it back in after we do interior, right? So in trying to decide where to put it, I think this is where they had the CB radio when I bought Goliath, but we use that as a cup holder and there's really no other good place for a cup holder here. But up here is where the original AM FM stereo was, but it was in a console. But you see these holes, one there and one there? Well, check it out. They're just about the perfect space for the CB bracket. So I think for now, that's where I'm going to mount it because I've also got ground points up there because all of the roof cab lights ground to a post right up here. And because this original radio was there, I should have a uh, power as well. So. I haven't tested the wires there in years, so I don't remember what's what, but, but I will. Now, I don't have an antenna or a coax cable or an antenna mount at this point. I took all that stuff off Goliath when I was painting them years ago, and it was all really bad shape, and the antenna was broken anyways. So, I don't even remember if there was a CB in it. There might have been. I might even have the old CB stashed someplace. I don't know, but we're going to go with new anyways. So, we're going to go ahead and get on the road. I haven't had any coffee yet, so we're going to get up the ways. We're going to get some coffee. And uh, usually at pilots, DAs, whatever, I can buy an antenna, an antenna mount with some coax and decide how I'm gonna do that. I'll probably just mount to the mirror bracket over here, but I don't know how I'm gonna route the coax. There's really no openings to get it out here. There is one down on the cowl, but then I gotta route the wire extra long. So I'm just not sure what we're gonna do, but we're gonna get to the truck stop first. And we'll figure that out.
guys. Definitely went further than we intended to. Um, exit 205 now at the White's Travel Center up here in Rafine, Virginia. Almost 100 miles. I'm surprised we didn't see a pile or anything between then. We were just in that area, but looking for some coffee. I'm at the Fuel Island now. Go ahead and clean the windshield and find a place to park. Then I'll go inside and uh, see what they got for CP radio stuff. We are not going to get fuel here because it's expensive. And about another 50 miles up, there is a Sheets. It's got truck diesel. It's a lot, lot cheaper. So I've got plenty of fuel to get there. So that's going to be the plan. Two stops, but we're not in a hurry. Well, it looks like I found a parking spot that was made just for Goliath. One, it's nice and wide. It was easy to get into. But I had all this room here where I could pull up straight before back it into the spot. Now, Katie already ran inside with the coffee cups while I was cleaning the windshield. So now I just got to go go find her, get my coffee, and uh, check out and see what they got for CP stuff. Now you guys may remember we stopped here last year on the way home from Laconia. We got fuel across the street. Remember, we blew some kind of little valve on Goliath. We had to stop here to fix it. So we ended up just spending the night here. Not doing that this time. Everything's running good. Brakes are working well. Everything is doing really, really good. Tensioner, no problems there either. Never seen over 200 and we've climbed a bunch of mountains. Hi guys, so I just got a simple Road Pro antenna. It's a four footer, but it came with the mount and a short piece of coax. Hopefully it will be long enough to do what I need to do. And then I also grabbed one of these gear keepers because I'm not sure where I'm gonna hang the mic yet. Anyway, we're not gonna install this right this second. We wanna get back on the road. We wanna get up to that sheets and get our cheap fuel. But also, I'm kinda of craving one of them sheets burritos. You guys remember when I went to New York to get the tractor. I love a sheets burrito. Guys, looks like I'm not the only one to want a cheap fuel. Look at the line here at the fuel islands. There's a lot of trucks in line. Good thing we're just not in a hurry, because now the fuel here is 319. At the whites where we were was 395. It's in a lot of places are 399. And when you're talking, you know, 80 cents difference, 85 cents difference, 70, whatever, that adds up when you're buying 200 gallons. It's a big difference. Guys, it took a good minute, but we were at the fuel pumps to get these uh, locking gas caps undone and start pumping some fuel. All right, guys, we are all set. It is about 6 p.m. now, and we're going to go ahead and hit the road. You know, we stalled here for a little bit, got our fuel, got something to eat, took a little bit of a break because it's almost 6, and well, right about 6, and we're going to hit some traffic areas if we leave too soon as we go through Winchester and then uh, through Maryland and West Virginia and on up into like Harrisburg. So right now, hanging back a little bit is kind of good because we're almost a little bit too early, even though we've only gone about 175 miles today. 
Remember, most of our plan is to get through all of that area um, from Harrisburg up after dark. So at least like Scranton and all that. So I think this should work out very well. We're still a couple hours away, obviously, but we shouldn't hit too much traffic at this point, I hope. Him and I blocked to stop a lot of the traffic from coming up on the 
right guys, just after 2 a.m. And as you can see, we just went through Hartford, Connecticut. Man, the roads are still every bit as rough out here as I remember them from last year, but the construction is much better. Didn't have all the detours that we had last year. So now we just gotta find a place to park. Uh, there's a TA up the way. I think it's still like 20 or 30 miles up, but it's just before we get to Massachusetts. So I think we're gonna try for that. All right, guys, as it turns out, we did not stop where or when we said we were going to. But uh, I'm going to get some sleep. I'll explain all of that a little bit later. Well, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, we are here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. No, we did not intend to make it all the way here this early. Now, I'm kind of glad we did. I was XPO right there dropping off our Amsoil delivery. They woke me up. When I recorded that bit a little while ago, it was only about 5.30 in the morning. And we were planning on stopping around 2.30 this morning, right after we got through Hartford, Connecticut, um, as you, we said in that clip. If you guys listen, you can hear the bikes practicing going around the track. So anyway, after we came through Hartford, Connecticut last night, we planned on stopping at the TA there just before you get to the Massachusetts state line. I forget the exit number, like 88 or 82 or something like that. But for some reason, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't see any signs. And as I was passing the exit, I kind of saw way up on top of the hill, the TA sign. So uh, I thought I knew where I was going, so we didn't GPS it. And uh, well, I was wrong. So after that, we tried two more rest areas and service plazas there on the uh, on I-90, just outside of Boston. And again, completely full, no way to fit Goliath in there. So we kept moving. We even ended up having a little bit of a trouble with the tensioner. I guess it didn't have enough tension. And uh, I, you know, I kind of thought it felt a little bit weak. But the belt had started to walk off of the pulleys. It was kind of clicking on the fans. As we pulled through one of those service plazas, I could hear that something wasn't right. Pull it over, check it. I fixed it, and it seems to be fine now. But my concern is that the tensioner may not put enough tension to keep it really secured in its track. So somehow it had bounced out. It didn't come off. It was still working. But the fan was just nicking the belt as it went around. The fan was what was stopping it from coming the rest of the way off, I believe. Either way, we fixed that. But still, no place to park. So then we made it through Worcester and, you know, kind of like into the Boston area. And at that point I was like, you know what? There's no way we're gonna find a place. But even if we did, we still gotta deal with all that traffic here in the morning. So we just decided to keep rolling until we got to the rest area that was in New Hampshire. Well, somehow Katie got us off onto a weird road that worried me because I went through a neighborhood for a moment before connecting with another interstate. And somehow we missed that initial welcome center and by the time we got to the next one, we were only 11 miles from the exit we needed to get off to come here to the Speedway. So I was like, why are we going to stop someplace for the night when we've only got 22 minutes left to get to our destination? So we pulled in here 530 in the morning, just as the sun was coming up, which is, again, way later than I wanted to. But it is what it is. And we're here. Got our Amsoil delivery. All in all, everything is good. Now we didn't record a whole lot last night while we were driving because the smoke going through Pennsylvania was terrible. And the way the lights were refracting off of the smoke, it was looking terrible on the camera. But guys, either way, this was a long day. And if I would record it in my normal style, this video would be way too long. So kind of a good thing we didn't and it was dark. There's not much to see anyways. Anyway, guys, I think that is gonna end it for this video. Uh, I think tomorrow we're gonna get set in place, but we're not gonna set up. On Friday morning, we will actually do our setup. Saturday morning is opening day, so we look forward to seeing some of you guys then. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys really enjoyed it. And until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.